This servant has borne our griefs and carried our pains. Yet we, Israel, esteemed him stricken, struck by God and afflicted. He was pierced because of our transgressions, crushed, broken, like that matzah, broken for our iniquities. The chastisement for our shalom was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. It makes you wonder, but that middle matzah, the unleavened one, the middle one, we would say the Mashiach, the servant of the Lord, coming, broken, as that matzah is. And it's as if Isaiah, uh, who he himself celebrated Passover, of course, he's after Moses. Uh, whether they had the afikoman at that time, not sure, but, but they certainly broke matzah. And you get the feeling that he's thinking about Passover. He's talking about a servant coming. He's talking about a lamb that's a sacrifice for Israel. And he's talking about matzah, in this case, the servant being broken for our transgressions. And by his stripes, we are healed. Uh, you may have noticed that matzah <laughs> is even pierced. Do you see that? I mean, that's the way it has to be cooked. You have to pierce it because it's cooked so quickly in the oven, kosher for Passover. The pierced marks are in lines, uh, you could call it stripes. Very symbolic, the more you meditate on these symbols of our Seder. And the afikoman, the name means, uh, I mean, I used to think it, it, uh, it was just dessert, you know, it comes at the end, that's what it means, it comes at the end, uh, and we will see that, uh, most of you know, that the afikoman's the last thing you taste after dinner tonight. Um, but some have interpreted this in the Jewish community. Some have interpreted it, the, 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 the Hebrew and the Greek, to mean he will come at the end. He returns. Messiah, Yeshua, broken. Messiah wrapped up what Christians celebrated uh, yesterday, right? <laughs> Good Friday. Um, of course, it's Passover. Does that shock anyone? I mean, it's, I've had so many people ask this. He's just say, Rabbi Barney, that's so weird that Easter and Passover are just like almost on the same day. It's like, well, duh. You know? <laughs> it's like it, it should have always been this way. But, you know, it's a lunar calendar, solar calendar, things got changed. And, and so it's unfortunate a lot of Christians don't realize that Passover is their holiday too. Passover teaches them about their Messiah. And those of us from a Jewish background, you know, we need to know about that Messiah too. And I think our Seder can help us connect all the dots. Yeshua, broken, hidden away for a while, and true to his name, he will reappear at the end of Seder. Baruch Hashem. Okay, well, we'll talk more about that and contemplate the meaning of that afikoman. At this time, you can see we t start telling the Passover story, a little more detail, and uh, uh, we read the opening paragraph, and I'm going to ask the kids. We have some kids coming up for the four questions, and uh, maybe the youth leaders come up with them, and uh, we got a microphone up front here, uh, so probably best down on the floor level, so kids... Start working your way up, and uh, we read together on page eight. Halach ma'anya, the achalu ahavatana, the ara di mitzrayim. In the English, this is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. All who are hungry, let them come and eat. All who are needy, let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. Now we are here. Next year, may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year, may we be free. Amen. Amen.
thought-provoking. You know, what's with the weird dinner, in other words? And uh, we read the first part of the answer in the Haggadah, and it's supposed to be from us adults, elders, so to speak, uh, on page 9 of your Haggadah. The answer, let's read together. We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Eternal, our God, brought us out from there with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. Now if God had not brought out our forefathers from Egypt, then even we, our children, and our children's children might still have been enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. Therefore, even if we were all wise, all men of understanding, even if we were all old and well-learned in the Torah, it would still be our duty to tell the story of the departure from Egypt. And the more one tells of the departure from Egypt, the more one is to be praised. Yes, avadim chayinu, the Pharaoh. We were slaves to Pharaoh, now we're free. Amen. So uh, we've got, again, on your song sheet, you've got both Manish Tana, a couple verses, and right into the answer, avadim hayinu. And uh, we're going to sing it. Clap along, and uh, hey, there's even some dance, I think, you know, we're, this is a joyful celebration tonight, so if you know the dance on Avadim or any of these songs, you're welcome to jump out there. Okay, Manish Tana. Manish Tana, Laila Haze, Mikol Alelo, Mikol Alelo, Shemikol Alelo, Anu Okli, Kame Tsu Matsa, Kame Tsu Matsa, Alayla Haze, Alayla Haze, Kulo. We were slaves, but now we're free. Amen. Avadim Hayinu. Everyone, put your hands together. Avadim Hayinu, Hayinu, Atavanehorim, Nehorim, Avadim Hayinu, Atav, Atav, Nehorim. Avadim, 
We were slaves to Pharaoh, but now we're free. We were slaves to Pharaoh, but now we're free. We were slaves, we were slaves to Pharaoh, but now we're free. We were slaves to Pharaoh, but now Okay, play it through a verse. Put those hands together. We were free. Abadim, one more time. Abadi mai nu ai nu ataba ne holi bande holi abadi ai nu ata ata bande holi abadi ai nu ata ata bande holi bande holi Baruch Hashem Thank you Lord for your freedom Amen all right. Nothing like hey, was anyone up at, what was it, 345 this morning? Uh, okay, all you fanatics were. Okay, if you know what I'm talking about, a major sign, major sign, blood moon, lunar eclipse, full moon. And if you're not following this, you may recall we talked about this last Passover Seder, because... There's four major Jewish holidays where these eclipses are taking place. It's called a tetrad. And I mean, an eclipse happens, you know, that's pretty regular, not, not so unusual. But uh, a tetrad, four eclipses on Jewish holidays, has only happened, I think it's the fourth time in history, recorded history. Uh, one tetrad where there were lunar eclipses on Jewish holidays, four of them, was the year 1493. Kind of close to anything, sound familiar? 1492, Columbus, okay, but on the Jewish side, we know that's just a few months after Jews were expelled from Spain, deported, and a major turn in Jewish history, 1492. The next uh, tetrad was all the way in 1949. 1949, close to something else you're familiar with. 1948, what happened? Israel, reborn, becoming a nation. Uh, a few months after that, the tetrad. Okay, Lord, uh, maybe we're watching. A <laughs> uh, few years later, Third Tetrad, 1967.